All right, welcome back. Let's uh, set up our river for render. So we'll be using the Arnold renderer. So we'll want to uh, change these materials over uh, to one of the Arnold shaders just because it'll have more properties that we can play with, in particular for the water. Um, all right, so what I'll do is I'll select the water and then I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, and then we want to go down here to this Arnold tab and choose the AI standard surface shader. There we go. And then now what we can do is also mouse wheel down here and maybe just give it a, like a blue color for now. There we go. And then um, I'm going to actually select this mesh and hide it. If you take a look at the terrain, so you can see that I actually have a couple colors here. So I actually painted out a section here um, with an uh, Arnold shader already. So what I did was I selected the mesh, went to face mode, grabbed the paint selection tool, and then grabbed a bunch of the faces and then added the material the same way we did with the water. Um, just going to unselect that. So what if I want to change this grass area, the green colored area, to um, the Arnold shader? So if we want to grab just this section, let me show you how to do that. So we're going to open up this Hypershade window. So let me bring it off from my other screen. Normally I work with this on the other screen, So, but for this uh, tutorial, this demo, I'm going to actually peel off a section. So. This Hypershade window is made up of a bunch of sections, and if you want to bring it back to this layout, you'll probably want a snapshot of this, but let me take you through it. Uh, we have the browser up here, the Create tab over here, the bins down here, the Material Viewer up here, and then the Property Editor down here, Editor down there. And then to find those sections, they're all under the Windows tab over here. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do for this tutorial is, I'm going to just peel off this section and bring it over here and then move this um, onto my other screen. Now, if you ever do that, all you need to do to put it back together is click on it and then find the section and then let go. Sometimes though, you know, you may ac accidentally close it, right? So what you would do is go back to that Windows tab, find your browser and then put it back. Um, it may not go back so easily. Um, you may need to move this window a bit and then finesse this back in and then it should fall back into place. Right, but I'm just going to use this section over here. So I'm going to bring that off and then move this off over here. All right, so I have this section over here. And then what I want to do is maybe just minimize a little bit. So I want to grab just this grass colored area. So I'm going to select the mesh first and I want to find out what color that is using. So I'm going to go into face mode, select a face, hold down the right mouse button, and then go to material attributes. And I can see that it's using Lambert 2. So I'll hover over Lambert 2, right? And then I'll hold down the right mouse button and I'll select objects with material. And then it's gonna grab all those faces for me and ignore this river channel section. And then what I wanna do is just take it through the process we did earlier where we held down the right mouse button, assigned a new material, um, and give it that um, AI standard surface shader again. But I already actually have a ground area created. So I'm going to hover over this, hold down the right mouse button, and assign material to selection. And there you go. Now this is going to use that AI standard surface that I made earlier. Um, this material, along with um, you know like the foliage and some of these other ones, um, they're nothing special. They're just the AI, AI standard surface with the roughness uh, tuned up a bit. Um, so for now, I'm just going to bring this back over here and just put, move it back into place and then close this window. So now these all have the shaders we need. Let's bring back our water. I'm going to open up the outliner and I'm going to select, select the water, press H on the keyboard. There we go. And then you can see over here, I have another object. I'm just going to unhide it. So um, we have a bunch of trees and rocks here. They're actually just the same tree and rock um, transformed a little bit. So I deformed it a little bit and then I duplicated it a bunch of times. So if you want to um, make these, I'll post a link down below to the tutorials from this channel that they were made from, right? But now um, in this scene, um, you'll want to maybe add your own objects, compose it how you like, right? and then we'll be ready to get ready for the render portion. All right, now let's set up our camera and our render view. So go up to the Create tab. We're going to create a camera first. So go to Cameras and then choose Camera. And I'm gonna open up the Outliner and let's rename this. So I'm gonna call this 
render cam underscore zero one. So you may only need one camera, but I'll call it render cam one. And then I'm going to close the outliner. And then uh, what we want to do is open up the two panel layout. And in this left panel, we want to set it to render cam one. So go to panels, perspective, and choose render cam one. And then now we just need to um, find the view we like and then lock the camera. Um, in this panel, I actually have the camera turned off, so I'll just show you, I'll turn it back on. So you can see it's over here. Sometimes it gets my way, so I turn it off. But as we orbit over here, you can see the camera repositions, right? So, or move it over here, it just starts repositioning. So if you don't wanna see the camera in here, just go to the show tab and then turn off camera. There we go. And then um, once uh, you have your camera how you like it, you can lock it. But before you lock it, um, what we can do is we can make it so that it's easier to see what this camera sees. So I'm gonna to go to the view tab. First, make sure the camera's selected. Go to the view tab. And then down here under camera settings, we're gonna turn on resolution gate, which is essentially the aspect ratio of what we'll see. And then we're going to turn on one more thing, go to the view tab down here, go to camera settings again, and turn on overscan, which will give us a little bit of a border. It makes it a bit easier to see as well. And then open up your attribute editor, one thing I like to do is I like to lower that um, color. So we'll go down here to the display options and then the gate mask color, I'll just lower that. Maybe to something like that is pretty good. All right, and then um, like I said, once you have your camera the way you like, you can just lock it with, let me just find a view, maybe something like this, and you can lock it with this button over here. That way you don't accident accidentally move it. Now, I already have a view I like, so I'm actually gonna go to panels and go to a camera I set up earlier, which is my render cam final. And render cam final is using this view over here. There we go. And then, um, yeah, that's fine. I can see the camera in here. I don't really wanna see the camera in there either. So I'm gonna go to cameras and turn off that camera. And now let's set up our render view. So your render view uh, button will be under your Arnold tab or your Arnold shelf. So click on this one here and then click on this one to open your render view. And what we're going to do, actually before we do that, is now that we have this set, set up, we can make sure that we only see one view at a time. So I'm gonna tap the space bar and that'll go back to this view. And then I'm gonna bring the render view back over here and I'm gonna pin it to the left here. And right now it's showing me that I, I'm pinning it to the left of the outliner. And sometimes when you do that, it hops on the um, left of the outliner and your, your outliner will end up over here, right? And you'll just need to grab your outliner and repin it to this side. But for me, it worked the way it should, right? So I'm just gonna minimize that. And now we have our render view in the left and our perspective view in the right. And if we ever need to change the camera, um, what this is seeing, which right now it doesn't see anything, but if we did, we tap the spacebar and we can go into this view and then by tapping the spacebar and we can turn off that lock and readjust it, right? I'm gonna relock that. And then what I'll do is I'll just go to the perspective view. And then I wanna change a couple settings in here. I'm gonna open up the render settings and go to system. I wanna make sure that I'm using my GPU because um, I have a pretty good GPU, so it's a little bit faster to render. So if your GPU is half decent, you may consider changing it to the GPU. By default, it's CPU. And then under the common settings, what I'll do is I'll go down here and I'll change my renderable camera to use a camera that I'm rendering, which for me is the final camera. And then in this um, Arnold render view, I'll also change the render cam to use that final camera. So this one here for me, there we go. And then I'm just gonna close this up. And now we should be ready to start rendering once we add some lights into the scene. All right, let's add some lights into the scene because right now if we try and render, we won't see anything. Your play button's right here. If I click play, you can see that nothing's happening. So I'm just gonna stop that. Um, what I'm gonna do is go up here and we're looking for the Arnold shelf and I'm going to add this last light. So this last light is going to add a sky dome light along with a physical sky. So click on this one and there we go. Let's open up the attribute editor. And if I select the light, you'll be able to see the properties. And what we wanna do is maybe lower the intensity. So I'm gonna lower it to 0.25. That should be fine. And I'll bring up the exposure. So for now, I'll make the exposure, um, let's try 10. 
and then we'll hit play. And 10 is way too strong, so we'll bring that down, and we'll bring it down to maybe um, maybe three for now. So if what I want to, oh, by the way, we set it to the camera that it's supposed to render. So in my case, it's not working. Sometimes you need to toggle this to one of the other cameras and then bring it back to the one you want, and then you'll get the view you want. Also, if you want to frame in on this, just select it and press F to frame in. All right. So now um, let's go over here and adjust some of these properties. So I'm going to open up the outliner, select the sky dome light, and I'm going to leave the exposure at three for now. And what we want to do is adjust that um, um, physical sky. So to get to back to the physical sky, you can mouse wheel down here to physical sky, or while you're on the sky dome light, you can also click on, let me show you, this little arrow. That'll bring you back to this physical sky. And then the, with the physical sky, we just want to adjust some of these. So the first thing I want to do is I want to adjust the shadow position or essentially the sun position. So to do that, we can change the um, azimuth, which will rotate that sun. And you can t look at the shadow to get an idea of where th the sun is positioned. So right now it's falling on this direction. And I'm going to bring it probably over, um, where are we? Maybe over this way a little bit. What I'm looking for is actually um, to probably bring it down as well. So let's lower that elevation, or in my case, I wanna lower the elevation, right? Probably to somewhere here for now. Um, I'm trying to highlight the river more than anything else. So I'm looking to get a nice reflection, right? So probably maybe we'll say right about here. There you go. All right. And then um, the intensity, I'll leave it at one. The turbidity is the aerosol. So this is essentially that fog and mist you would see in the air, the moisture. So for the turbidity, I'm going to bring that up a little bit for now. Right. And then the um, intensity, this one is this um, light here in that horizon. So I'm probably going to lower that a little bit here. Um, for the sun itself, I'll probably bring it out of my scene. So for now, I'll leave it here because it's easy to see what's happening, right? But um, essentially, I'm probably going to maybe raise that elevation up to somewhere here. All right. Um, let's bring that sun down for now back to where it was. And then I want to adjust some of these colors as well. So right now, um, I want a little more exposure. So I'm going to go back to where we had before. So I'll click this arrow. That brings back to that sky dome light and maybe bring up the exposure a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good for now. And then um, let's go back to our physical sky and I want to change that sky tint color. So I'm going to make it a little bit more like daylight. So just like a bright yellow. Probably somewhere here is good for now. And then I can see this needs a lot more light. So we can give it more light a couple ways. We can give it more light by also increasing this ground albedo. So the ground albedo is the reflection from the earth back to the sky. So if I were to drag the slider up, right, it's going to bring some of that light up top. And if I were to change the color, right, it's going to, oh, hang on, move it over here, right? It's going to push some of that color into that sky and also back down to the ground. Um, but I'm going to leave it at white. All right, so I like the look of this. I need a little more light, so I mentioned that one way we could do is just to bump up this exposure. So maybe I'll punch maybe five into here, right? So now we're getting a lot more light, and then we can start scaling it back to something we like as well. What I want to do, though, is actually add a couple more lights into the scene. I want to add a light um, coming from this way just to um, fill in this area a little bit, and then a light coming a little bit from the back here to create more of a highlight this way. Um, also, I'm getting a lot of reflection here. So this water, we'll need to adjust it. So let's select the water and we'll go down over here and let's play with some of these properties a little bit. So right now it's using this blue. I'm just going to make it a little more saturated. And I want to bring up that roughness a little bit. So I'll go down here and maybe make the roughness about 0.5 for now. Uh, maybe even like a little bit more. So something there, actually, no, 
I'll go like a 0.56. So this is what it looks like. And then down here, if you want to make your water transparent, and what you can do is you can just drag this weight up. As I drag it up all the way, you can see that it's transparent and we can see through it. Um, what I like to do is only have a little bit for the low poly art, sorry, this low poly thumbnail that I'm creating. So I'm gonna lower that transmission maybe down to somewhere probably between point, maybe 0.8 to point, sorry, 1.2 is probably good. And then uh, the specular color, sorry, the transmission color, maybe I'll make that um, blue as well. So something like that. All right, and then actually, yeah, I'll leave it like that for now. And then a couple other things we can change is the subsurface scatter. So the, give it a bit of subsurface scattering and we'll give it maybe um, either an orange or maybe a, even like a reddish or purple would work, look nice, right? So we'll go here. Uh, for now, actually no, let's go with something like that probably. And then, um, and then for the sheen, that's another one you can play with. Be careful with this one. As you drag it up, it can be pretty powerful once you change this color, right? So maybe the sheen, I'll go for something like this, right? But I probably don't want that much weight to it, right? Probably somewhere down here is fine. All right, so this is already looking really nice, right? We can go back to our light. Actually, we don't even have to select it from here. We can select the sky. And then over here, we can bring up that exposure, right? To something like that. But what I'm going to do is actually lower that to around here to get the sky I want. And we're going to add a couple more lights. So let's add an area light. So I'm going to scale this up and then move this over here. And this one, I just want to create a bit of a highlight on this side. So I'm going to probably scale it up a little bit more, right? And then just maybe rotate it down a little bit. So coming from this side, and then uh, we need to give this a bit of exposure. So I'll bring this up until I get a little bit of a highlight on that tree line. So where are we? Exposure, there we go. Maybe I'll just manually pump, punch in a big number. So something like 10 for now. 10's not bad. Um, maybe even 11? So 11's interesting. I'll probably go with maybe 10 for now because I don't want to overdo it. And then let's add one for the other side as well. So let's add another area light. We'll scale this one up. And this one I'll bring over here and rotate it down a little bit. And this will come from roughly where the sun comes from, just a little bit. Um, you can see that as I rotate this, it's going to be in object space. If you want to switch that to world space, you can just double click your move tool. Well, actually it is in world space, Never mind. Okay, close that up. Um, the rotate is probably not. So we'll double click the rotate uh, tool and change this to world space for a second. And I'm just gonna rotate it this way and change it back. Here we go. And move it up here. And I think something like that is fine. And then I'll bump up this exposure probably to like an 11 or something, maybe even 12. And we're getting a lot more light as you can see. All right, starting to look pretty nice. Um, this top glow here is pretty strong, but eventually I'll move my sun out, so it's not as much of an issue. The water is the, probably the thing I want to correct, right? Right now it's looking um, not quite the way I want, so I'm actually gonna switch to that water shader I made earlier that I played with. So I'm going to, over here, select the water, hold down the right mouse button, choose assign as existing material, and I'm gonna go with this, um, where is it, AI water final. So this is closer to the water I have. And I'll take you through these properties in case you want to copy it. So with this one, I have the color, I have the uh, roughness set at 0.4, and I also have the color there. So these are the values if you want to see it. That's that one, and that is that one. And then down here for the transmission, I have 0.4. So I went pretty low on the transmission, right? Um, Actually, no, actually not too bad. I, I think the other one we had was like even lower than that. 
Um, and then the subsurface, I have really low value for the subsurface, but I probably could bring that up a little bit. Probably no harm there. It's not too bad. And then this sheen, this is what I have. So those are the properties for the water. And then let's fix the sky. So I will play with the sky a little bit now as well. So let's first um, go to this sky dome. And the exposure is okay. So what I'll do is I'll probably bring up some of these. Um, that should be fine as well. Let me just bring this up and see what it looks like. You can see that's filling out quite nicely. I'll probably lower the color of that earth, but let's for now leave it at 14. Your values will probably be different from mine, but what I recommend is just playing with these and seeing what you get. But you can see this is really starting to uh, take shape. Uh, this one is okay. Maybe I'll bring it to 10.5 or ish. I think that's fine. And now I just want to adjust my sun. So I'm going to uh, go select the sky and I'm going to bring that sun out of view, which will mean I'll have to click on this one to go back to the physical sky. And I'm going to raise that elevation. It's going to change everything. And for me, that's really starting to look nice. Um, but you can see it's overexposed now. And then for the, um, by the way, why I didn't uncheck enable sun, let me just bring this back down. Right. If you uncheck enable sun, you're going to lose all that lighting there. Right. So that's why I leave that on. And for the sun size, this is uh, the 0.5 is what it would look like in reality from the distance from the earth. But I like to also bring this up to probably like a 1.5. Right. Because I think that looks a little bit nicer as well um, if the sun was in my scene. And I could leave that there. But for my final thumbnail, I have a bit of um, text there. And so I don't need that sun there. So I'm just going to bring this out. Um, there we go. And then I'll probably play with this some more and I'll come back and show you the final render. All right, so I played around with the some of the color properties and the lights as well, um, and adjusted the water a little bit. Um, so now this is what we have so far, and it's time to give it a higher quality render to take a look at it and inspect it. First, I forgot to mention, I 
turned on the denoiser for this. So this cog wheel, you can add an imager. And I added the optics denoiser, which is um, if you have an NVIDIA card, you can use that one. So I'm just going to close that up. And then now let's give it a uh, give this a 1080p render. So go to the settings and we will go down here and we'll change it from HD 540 to 1080p. There we go. I'm going to close it up and then make sure you press F to frame in on this scene. And after a few seconds, it'll render. And then we can take a look at it and see if we're happy with it. And then we can start adding, uh, increasing the samples and creating our very final render. So I'm pretty happy with this. So what I'm going to do is stop this. And what I like to do is start increasing some of the samples on the lights. So I'm going to start by selecting this light over here. And I'll go down to samples, probably bring it up to like four or five. I find four is fine for a scene like this. And I'll do the same for this one. Here we go. Uh, we could bump up the shadow samples as well, right? Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is. It's, I'm fine with that. And then the background, the sky dome, I'm going to up these samples. So probably make this maybe um, four as well. And then finally, I'll change this to a 4K render. So I'll go back to the settings. Um, down here, I'm going to go um, 3840 by 2160. There we go. And then prep frame in on this. And then this will probably um, lag if I try and record at the same time. So I'm going to hit play and then we'll come back when it's done and we'll take a look at it. All right, it just finished. So let's take a look at what we have. So I'm going to peel off this render and let's just expand it. And here's the final image. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'll probably upload it to the channel and have it as the thumbnail. And yeah, so here is the final uh, render, uh, the 4K image. All right, and that wraps up another one for us. Hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to make and hopefully you were able to learn something new as well. Until next time, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.